Mark, we all took mathematics in high school. I enjoyed it. But as you begin to understand the physical world, you become shocked, amazed at the indispensability of mathematics to explain empirical sciences or what's called the unreasonable effectiveness of math. What is it about math, mathematical formulas, that is so powerful in describing what reality is all about? What mathematics really is, or what it seems to be, is a description of a certain part of reality. So it consists of these sentences that describe a certain structure. There's a lot of different structures in mathematics. The most obvious one is, this, is the system of natural numbers. It starts with zero, one, two, three, and it goes forever. Um, and mathematicians, what they do is they prove surprising results about these structures that you wouldn't notice at first. So for instance, Euclid proved that there are infinitely many prime numbers. So arithmetic, the theory, is a set of sentences that describe this structure. And the sentences are straightforward sentences like three is odd. Three is an odd number. Three is an odd number. Now this sentence looks to be true, and it looks to be of the same form as a sentence like the earth is round. Now think about the sentence the earth is round. In order for that sentence to be true. There has to there be a real earth, exactly. and it really has to be round. Exactly. <laughs> So now take three as odd. In order for three as odd to be true, there has to be a real thing, three, and it has to be odd. Well, okay, we think that arithmetic is true. So the question is, what's three? What's a number? Don't see them anywhere. It's not under my chair. Where's three? Well, if um, I had three pebbles, what's that? So that's one view. There are basically four views you could have here. One is three is this general term that applies to piles of three things. That's a physicalistic view. Then there's a psychologistic view that three is an idea in our head. It's all in my head. Exactly. Then there's an anti-realist view that there's no such thing as three. And then there's the Platonistic view that three is a real object, but it's not a physical object or a mental object. Instead, it's an abstract object. This is fascinating. And let's talk about that. This platonic object named because Plato had this concept of form where there could be specific exemplifications of, of red uh, rocks or red clothes, but there's something red that's a special thing that exists independent of the specific examples. But how does that work in numbers? Well, the idea is that there's this structure, there's this sequence of numbers, and it exists, I mean, metaphorically, you could say it exists in platonic heaven, but the right way to think of it really is, it exists, but it's not physical, it's not mental, it's not causal, it's not spatiotemporal. It's completely non-physical. It, it exists outside of time as well Outside as of time and outside of space. So. But really exists. Really exists. Now, why would anyone think such a thing? <laughs> right. Well, the reason is, when you first hear it, you're like, that's Ridiculous. crazy. Ridiculous. Yeah. Here's the reason people believe it. or It's probably the most common view among philosophers of mathematics. The reason is because there's terrible problems with the other three views, anti-realism, psychologism, and physicalism that make people go, this is the only view out there. Um, so you eliminate the other things, and what is looks like improbable is the only thing you got left. Exactly. So let's, let's understand how that works. OK, so the two views that really are very easy to get rid of are the physicalistic view and the psychologistic view, um, because they claim that mathematics, the full theories are true, and they're true of either physical objects or mental objects. And it's really easy to see that that's not the case. So when you think about simple arithmetic, like three is odd, or two plus one equals three, it's, it's easy to think of those as maybe being about the physical world, right? Because right. you take right, two right, pebbles, you right. take another pebble, you got three pebbles. But the problem is that mathematics, the, or if you look at all of our mathematical theories together, it becomes clear that they can't be about the physical world. Set theory is probably the easiest way to see this. In set theory, it's been proven, contrary to the common wisdom, that there are infinitely many sizes of infinity. So most people think, once you have infinity, that's it. You can't get bigger. You throw more objects in, it's still just infinity. But in 1870, it was proved by Cantor that actually there are many sizes of infinity, and in fact, infinitely many sizes of infinity. They keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Transfinite. Transfinite cardinals, they're called. Um, so there's the natural numbers, and then there's the infinite numbers, or the transfinite numbers, and they keep going. They keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. 
And there's just no way that this theory, so now we've got a theory that describes this structure, and there's just no way to take that theory as being about the physical world. So that eliminates the physical explanation of right. mathematics, because there are mathematical things, transfinite math, right. that is impossible to represent in the physical world. Exactly, and likewise for the psychologistic view, the, the human mind is head. finite. Even if you think it's infinite, it's not that big. Yeah. Um, so oh. the only views left are, if you want mathematics to be true, a true description of reality, it's got to be about some non-physical reality. The only, op the only other view you could have is an anti-realist view that there just are no mathematical objects out there. And there so are that just throws everything away. It's, it just says that the mathematical objects you think are real or not. Right. There's no such thing as three. All right. So tell me about the final one, the platonic view. Platonism. Platonism. Um, well... Um, the view is that there's platonic heaven or some aspect of reality that's not physical that contains all of the mathematical structures we study. So it contains the sequence of natural numbers. It contains Euclidean ge geometric spaces, non-Euclidean geometric spaces, set theoretic universes. All of these structures... And everything that's logically possible. Any, any possible structure you can possibly think of, it's there. Even if it hasn't been thought of. Even if it hasn't been thought of. So mathematics consists in discovering the nature of these um, structures. This and is the great debate, whether mathematics is discovered because it really exists someplace and we have to try to find it, never can find it, or whether it's invented. That's the anti-realist view, that it's invented. Right. right. So in the, in the uh, discovery, now we have this platonic heaven mm -hmm. where we have all these mathematical forms, infinite number. Mm -hmm. um, what? What, what more can we say about it other than the other possibilities are not true? Is there a way that you can feel more comfortable about the reality of these objects? You mean, are there reasons to believe yes. that? Well, yeah. the, the, the famous argument is the, the argument that you started with about the usefulness in physics. So you might think, so one anti-realist view, there's different kinds of anti-realist views, but one, probably the best anti-realist view is the fictionalist view that mathematics just isn't true. It's false because there are no such things as numbers. So it's like Alice in Wonderland. It's not a true story because there's no Wonderland. Likewise, math, they, so fictionalists agree with Platonists. You're right. It, it's supposed to be this theory about these weird objects, but there's no such thing. So it's just a fiction. Um, well, here's the traditional argument against that view and supposed to be the argument for Platonism is, look, mathematics is built into our physical theory. You think our physical theory, quantum mechanics, biological theories, chemistry theories, you think that these are true. And mathematics is completely embedded into them in an ineliminable way. So if you think the physics is true, you have to believe the mathematics because it's a part of the physical theory. That's the argument against fictional, against, right. against throwing out the mathematics as just not being true. Right, and so it's an argument that the full-blown mathematics is true. The objects have to be there. The only thing they could be is abstract objects. And so you get Platonism. <laughs>